Hey YouTube, welcome back to We Sibs, West Coast, East Coast Siblings, where we cover your favorite movies and TV shows, and tonight we are covering Debris episode 12. I almost said third numbers. <laughs> I am going to talk a little bit about some news that happened over the last couple of days and then we'll get into the breakdown and then we'll get into my general review. So if you like this video, don't forget to like this video, comment and subscribe and click the bell so you can be notified of my coverage of the season finale, series finale, of Debris happening next week. So in an article, the actor Jonathan Tucker was talking, who plays Brian, was talking about how the last few episodes of Debris are going to be some heavy hitters. They're going to answer the questions that we have. There's going to be some twists and turns that we don't see coming and he also confirmed my now suspicion that Brian's conversation with Fanola on the, on the phone call at the end of episode 9 was not romantic which is really interesting because it definitely seemed romantic I want to say one of them said that they loved the other who knows it's hard to keep track I'm gonna hold you to that promise Jonathan Tucker I hope that these next, well, at this point, I hope this last episode answers all of our questions about debris and about what the heck is happening. Also, just want to note, too, that NBC has not made its official decision on whether or not it's going to keep debris. At this point, episode 13 would technically be a mid-season finale, and if the show gets picked up, it'll, you know, go on for another, I think, 12, I want to say. But the ratings aren't doing great, as I'm sure a lot of you guys know, so... Stay tuned. So let's get into this week's episode. Basically, all of a sudden, the debris at the orbital headquarters starts to act on its own. And we later learn that there's a sort of seam. They're calling it a pocket dimension, which we saw in previous episodes. And basically, the debris is in a box. It's being sucked through this pocket dimension. And then the pocket dimension after a second or two, is throwing the box out, but the piece of debris is missing. So immediately, Brian and Fanola are called in, and they think that it's Influx that is taking these pieces of debris and sort of nitpicking them out of these boxes and chucking the boxes. We later learn that the employees are being affected by the debris, and they're sort of using them as... They're sort of like in a trance, and, you know, they're walking around and kind of staring at stuff. Let's jump back to GJ really quick. So Brian and Fanola catch up with GJ, which I'm like, where weren't they in Seattle? They just drove cross country that fast. But I actually know that I think about it. Maybe they were in Maine with all of the drama with Shelby and Kathleen. Either way, they get to Virginia really, really fast and catch up with GJ, who has found uh, basically like an old radio station location that has a strong enough broadcasting signal to help him find this special piece of debris that we heard about way back in, I want to say, episode six. He is remembering, of course, because it's convenient and this is debris, how to build the machine to help him locate the nacho to end all nachos. And with help from the Ligari files, he's going to create a piece of equipment to help him locate this specific piece of debris that Influx is after to change the world with. So during the episode, they neutralize the sucking pocket dimension for a second. Vanilla realizes that there's a Ligari reading uh, underneath them. So they go and look and they find this extra big piece of debris that seems to be stuck in the floor. But they also notice that there are blueprints and information on how to weaponize the debris. Of course, Vanola, on the verge of tears as usual, confronts Maddox and is like, You've been using my father's work to weaponize the debris. And Maddox is like, he kind of slips out of it. He's like, I was just defending us. You know, America needs to weaponize this debris, and we're not the only country that's doing it. We need to be able to fight. And I'm like, okay, I mean, I think that's a reasonable answer. And I can't remember when this conversation happens in the episode, but Fanola asks GJ why he thinks Maddox is trying to kill him, and GJ's very basic, boring answer is that basically Maddox is a part of the government, and the government doesn't like anything that they can't control, and therefore they're trying to capture GJ and neutralize him. And I'm like... All right, listen, we'll get to my review of this episode in a second. I'm just trying to tell you what happened. Uh, we also learned that Maddox and the team trying to weaponize the debris is probably what set off the debris to be sucked into this pocket dimension in the first place. Yeah, so the big thing that I think happens in this episode is I guess Brian has a kind of come-to-Jesus moment where he sees... Uh, 
Dang it, you guys know I don't remember people's names. Homegirl who was affected by the debris in last week's episode, who was talking every conversation that Brian had ever had in his life. So she died, but Brian sees her again, and he reaches out his hand to touch her, and she touches him and basically enlightens him, I'm gonna say. And all of a sudden, Brian is a believer in the debris, hardcore. And he's like, Fanola, we have to let the debris do what it needs to do. So immediately, I'm like, okay, so it's not Influx that's trying to build whatever it is on the other side of this pocket dimension it's the aliens anyway so brian convinces finola to have a little faith and be a believer and they stop their attempts to neutralize the pocket dimension they help the big piece of debris that was stuck in the floor below get sucked up into the pocket dimension and then all of a sudden we get a big ball of light. Now this is the big ball of light that they were talking about a few episodes ago. Uh, I think they've mentioned it twice now. Vanilla's like, oh, it's the big ball of light. She's like really excited about it. I don't know what that is about. But anyway, she sees the big ball of light and basically they let it go. So another note to make is Brian basically says that in the moment that he touched Homegirl, uh, he immediately understood what the debris was doing and everything. Granted, he didn't understand it enough to explain it. So did he really understand it? Hashtag, I was listening in high school. <laughs> The debris wanted to know why Brian was so fiercely protective and that's what it got from him and in return it helped him understand everything that the debris was doing. I don't freaking know you guys. Anyway, the last big thing that happens, or I guess two last things, Asher escapes from prison, which we all knew was going to happen, and he basically kind of lets us know that someone has been spying on GJ, or his homeboy who picks him up out of prison gets a call and says Otto said that GJ found this big piece of debris that he's been looking for. Also Maddox gets a call saying that whatever it is that he's been looking for has also been found. Now I'm gonna assume that Maddox has also been looking for this piece of debris that GJ is going after. We do learn in this episode that the piece of debris that Influx and GJ are after that is going to change the world is apparently a piece of debris that maps out where all the other pieces of debris are on the planet Earth. I'm struggling to know why that's helpful. I guess once they know where all the pieces are, they can collect all of the pieces and then weaponize a machine. So I guess it just saves them a little time. So complaints on this episode. First of all, are Brian and Finola the only orbital agents in field? Literally every time a piece of debris shows up, they're the only two head people to go find it. So I'm just a little confused about that. Also, when the people that are in like the trance start freaking out, Maddox freaks out and he's like, Brian, Brian. I'm like, aren't you Brian's boss? Shouldn't you like know how to handle these sorts of situations? Why are you so afraid of these people? Once again, Finola, gosh, uh, she's crying because she finds out that Maddox and Orbital have been using her father's genius whatever to weaponize the debris. Didn't we already know that I guess we knew that's why Influx wanted them and she's surprised that Orbital wanted him for the same reason that's just like a little naive to me especially after she realizes that Maddox is probably not who he seems what did you think he was he wanted your father for like to make cupcakes I just don't understand that like once again princess positive all of a sudden suspects the debris now halfway through this episode she quickly draws this conclusion that Whoever's on the other side of the pocket dimension is building a machine to destroy all of humanity. This is after they realize that the people on the other side of the debris are the aliens who created the debris. But all of a sudden, Finola thinks that they're terrible people and they're building a weapon to destroy all of humanity. And what they're doing is unknowable. And I'm like, so what? Are you gonna sit and cry about it again? Like, aren't you supposed to be an MI6 agent? Like, don't you need to figure out how you're gonna defend yourself if they're weaponizing this thing? Like, you can't just cry about everything goodness just saying we have one episode left of debris and they need to answer all of these questions my final conclusion and I know you guys some of you disagree with me on this but I don't think debris is a terrible show I think it's just a show that thought it would do so well that it would have time to explain all of these things over seasons and the truth is it probably doesn't they needed to kind of get it together and they didn't so that's kind of disappointing and I think what's most annoying is that if debris gets canceled after next week's episode we will never get the answers to our questions but you know here's to hoping I mean it's all beautifully shot it's fun to look at uh it wasn't raining this time so that's nice this has been an adventure in patience and tenacity so thank you 
my sweet, wonderful viewer for being on this ride with me. One more, one more, and hopefully they will answer all of our questions. Anyway, you guys, that's all I have. As always, let me know what you think is going on. What did you think of this episode? I mean, to me, it feels like they're putting a bunch of pressure on themselves to get it all wrapped up in the next episode. As usual, like this video if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you can be notified of all things We Sibs. Christopher just finished covering The Nevers, which is a phenomenal show. You want to watch some good sci-fi, get HBO Max and watch The Nevers, man. I was thoroughly entertained. I told you to click the bell. I told you to like and subscribe. I told you to talk to me, as in comments. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, you guys, I will see you next week for the season finale, series finale, of Debris. <laughs> Bye.